Now I'm moving on, shifting the gear, and um, sorry Laura Quinn, you have to come up after that. You can do it. <laughs> Laura is amazing, she's a local author, and she was one of my first ever students who has set up her own publishing press, be inspired, and come, and she's got a beautiful display down the back. But Laura is the perfect person to shift the gear in this conversation and to show you her beautiful books. Thank you, Laura. Okay, so I didn't prepare a talk for a reason, and I don't know whether Karen's trying to test me this week, but she keeps putting me up <laughs> after emotional talks, and I'm coming up with a big trendy monkey blue. I was meant to go up here with my hairstyles and my makeup done and not be flushed, because it's already nerve wracking as it is, but that story's just <laughs> threw me off, off yeah. the beaten track. Um, just goes to show the kind of things Karen can do. She deals with different energies all the time, and we go from sad stories to happy stories, and um, my writing journey began probably when I was five or six, my father would say, but um, I'm a local girl, Newtown Butler, and lived in Australia, lived in Belfast, and I followed my father's path of bookkeeping, the mundane kind of work, it paid the bills, it put oil in the house, my parents were happy, I was happy, people around me were happy, so the people around you are happy, you should be happy, but there was a wee itch inside me, this creative flair that I wanted to push out, and I always told I had my English teacher, Mrs. McAleer, who I should have invited to this event because she would have loved, kind of, she always said from I was young that I had that in me, that I was going to be the storyteller, I was going to be the one that would put words out. And so on the birth of Cian Quinn, who just changed my path completely, he's three years of age, but in 2017 I had Cian. And we decided to stay at home and bring our family up close to fa um, close to our old family and settle down and get some roots because we were just we didn't know where we were going. Um, Cian is a bit mischievous and he's like a little monkey. And his auntie from the other side gave him a little yellow raincoat and a teddy. And from that, Monkey Blue was born. It was very simple. I know people look and say, "Where did your inspiration come from?" But Monkey Blue was just literally born within um, five to ten minutes. Um, Mac McAvoy is coming up to speak after me and he is the same. The ideas as a writer can come very quickly but there is a process of meeting the right people that are going to bring these books to publication. Now, I had a lot of um, different avenues but there was something about Karen that just, I was, once I got in her ear that was it. I was just going to, Monkey Blue was going to be published whether um, I was, who I was going to meet, it just happened to be that I was aligned with Karen. I was never going to deter her from what she was telling me. So basically, from Monkey Blue and Friends, um, I was going to be dropping Cian off at nurseries and as an anxious mother, I wanted him to be open to his friendship groups because sometimes we're not. We kind of get together in cliques and we don't mean to do it. And we socially, we would have, there's five girls in my house, so we'd have been known the McNally girls and we always hung about together. So when you get older, you start to break away from your sisters and realise there's room for other people in your life and Monkey Blue is kind of like that. It's friends come in shapes and sizes and that is his slogan. So anytime he goes anywhere, we have a big clumsy giraffe. We have Eli the Eagle, who's the little wise one. And we have Millie the Caterpillar, who kind of reminds me of Vera now, because she's very inspirational. She's the little female of the group, but she actually is the stronger. She's small and tiny and I've done that purposely, but she's actually the stronger version. So, um, the stronger character, sorry. So this is how your characters come to life, just daily things. Um, Meeting people, it was all about Cain, and then obviously Monkey Blue and Friends, everybody loved it, we wanted to see how it would go. So from that we had Snowflakes and Christmas Cakes, which was a Christmas one. And then we had, um, what is the third book, Karen? Yes, <laughs> Snowflakes and Christmas. Oh, My Family Tree, so um, I was bringing home a baby, a new baby into Cain's. We were just used to being Cain, and we were bringing home Danny. And um, Monkey Blue, my family tree, my brand new baby sister and me, we kind of switched it up. Um, that was the third book in the collection. And then the fourth one is The Trailblazing Crew. So I basically met with Kevin McHugh. I was in getting my hairstyle, which I do every week now, and um, with a lovely girl called Donna Brady. And she said, you need to get in touch with Kevin McHugh. He's a fabulous artist and he's going to bring this all to life for you. Now this was 2017. 
and all I had was a white piece of paper and from all of that we have all of this and there's a lot of it going on and we sold the rights of the Monkey Blue brand to a company called Bootful. These are kind of things you don't think are going to happen by the way when you start out as a writer you think this will never happen, you'll never get this big call, you'll never get this big break. But it can happen. Bookful own a 3D studio, so they love the, the books that much that they put me on a podium with Beatrix Potter and they published the Monkey Blue brand through a 3D app. So now Monkey Blue, I wanted to set it up for today, but he kind of, um, with the technology around here, I thought I'd leave it for another day, but he actually comes alive in your living room now. So that's how quickly things can happen. So Monkey Blue actually dances beside us. So these were things I dreamt of. I probably just thought it was crazy at the time, but I dreamt these things up and now they're actually happening. After meeting Kevin, there's a lot of inspiration coming from Kevin. He loves Halloween and he keeps his Halloween decorations up all year round. So on the way home from Kevin's house, I read the Watton Air collection and it's the most popular. It's the one that's winning the awards and it's kind of bringing attention to Monkey Blue because the Watton Air collection is the second and it's, it's just got legs of its own. And from What on Earth is under my bed, again, What on Earth is in my garden shed. That was inspired by my father. Because um, he likes to hide in the garden shed <laughs> whenever his family comes round, he gets on his <laughs> So each one of those books, they are my favourite. I do. You're not meant to have a favourite child as such, or should you have a favourite book? But they're both different. Monkey Blue is the educational brand. What on Earth is the more fun-loving brand, and it's spooky and there's a lot going on with it. But um, there's always a wee hidden meaning of what's actually under the under the bed and in the garden shed. It's never what children think, it's always a reasonable explanation. So what now is my garden shed? I was trying to get copies for that for today and even though I rushed and everything, it will be here tomorrow, which is very typical. But um, from garden shed came, I went and started Karen Lemmy and started going to low school visits and I told them I wanted to finish the collection for the book building because they wanted four books of each. So that was my first kind of, okay, there's deadlines now, there's pressure now and um, modern earth is behind my teacher's head came from a school visit and I kind of joked with the wee girl that gave me the inspiration saying this is going to be a book and then what on earth behind my teacher's head is done and completed the covers ready as well and that's both of the collections kind of aligned and they're doing really well and they're thriving but it was all due to Karen so I want to give her a massive thanks because the academy is I didn't get to college I didn't get to do the Serenity Sisters but Carolyn has blessed us all with these little Serenity um, magical little bookmarkers. I turned mine into a necklace, but that's the creative person in me. But I feel as if I'm now kind of joined with all these women. I didn't get into a sorority, but this is kind of my wee unit of women, and they're so inspirational. And I can't mention them all because I love them all. I made some fabulous connections this week. Is my time up yet? <laughs> but, so thank you all. <laughs> Now, Laura does school visits, guys, so if you want her to come to your school, she's local and she'll come and inspire. She's amazing. I think she has 16 books in production. Laura, 16 books in production? 16 books in production in two and a half years. That's hard work. 